Good morning everybody. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. I'm just out here on my porch relaxing for a little bit before church gets started and listening to the sounds of God's creation all around me. Why don't you listen and see what sounds you can hear? was that? Those were some pretty crazy sounds. What did you hear? I couldn't believe I could hear all that from my porch. You know, you never know what you're going to hear if you just stop and listen. Sometimes we need to stop and listen for the voice of God. Pastor Myron's going to be talking today about how Samuel listened to hear God's voice. But we hear other places in the Bible where people have to listen for God's voice too. And sometimes God's voice is really loud, and sometimes it's really quiet. In 1 Kings chapter 19, the prophet Elijah is hiding in a cave from his enemies, fearing for his life. He cries out to God, and God tells him to move to the mouth of the cave. When he's at the mouth of the cave, Elijah listens for God. And a mighty wind rushes past the cave so strong it shakes the rocks right off the mountain. But God was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. 
And then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. And finally, there was a gentle breeze. And on the breeze, Elijah heard God speak. Sometimes when life is hard, or we're facing an important decision, we pray to God and ask Him to speak to us. And He might not speak to us the way He spoke to Elisha in an audible voice. Instead, He speaks through our hearts. He speaks through His Word, the Bible. So when we are faced with a decision, and we go to God, we pray like the Lord's Prayer says, Your will be done. We know where to turn. We know what is right. We know what God wants because He has already told us in His Word and in our hearts. So listen today. Be still. Be quiet. And hear what God is saying to you. Good morning and welcome to Penn Forest. It's so great to have you with us this morning, whether you're sitting here at our parking lot on campus or whether you're joining us online at home. Yes, I said joining us here in the parking lot on campus. This morning is our very first drive-in service. If you didn't hear about it, make sure you check our announcements, our Facebook page, or just give us a call. We're gonna be doing our drive-in service this week and for the next two weeks, leading up to a huge celebration on June 7th, when we can all be back in the sanctuary together. Now there are some guidelines to make sure that we all stay safe during this time, so make sure you check those out before you come. Ministry is still happening at Penn Forest. While other churches are saying they're just closed, we are open. It just looks a little different than it did, right? Teens are continuing to meet on Zoom. We meet at four o'clock on Mondays, seven o'clock on Wednesdays, and three o'clock on Fridays for a game and hangout time. Our kids are continuing to meet on Zoom. They're meeting at seven o'clock on Mondays, 6.30 on Wednesdays, and at 10 a.m. on Friday mornings. And our adults are meeting at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evenings with Pastor Myron for a Bible study. Our women are also meeting every other week on Thursday night. So we just met this past week, so we'll meet again in two weeks. And we welcome you to join us. Uh, we are going through a book, but even if you're not reading the book, you're still welcome to join us because I think we women, more so than the men, need a little bit of friendly faces as we get through all this together, right? Amen? We continue to be doing outreach during this time, and we're so grateful for your generosity during this time. There are three ways to give. You can mail your check to 3735 Chaparral Drive, Roanoke, Virginia, 24018. You can give online at pfwc.net or you can text the word GIVE to 540-264-3735. We thank you so much for your generosity, but more importantly, God blesses your generosity. 
Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time this morning because we've got great worship and a great message this morning. Big thanks to Jonah and Melody Atkinson from Eastview Wesleyan Church who are helping us, continuing to help us with our morning worship. So wherever you are this morning, raise your voices in a joyful noise to the Lord.
walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you I will trust in you stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide, but I Just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. 
Good morning. Thank you so much, uh, Jonah and Melody and the Eastview Praise Team. Greatly appreciate all your assistance and help during this time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for how incredibly great you are. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in the midst of the craziness, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the one thing that is never changing, and we thank you for that. I pray that you would just be with those that are struggling emotionally right now, that you would just bring peace in their situation and just wrap your arms around them. I pray for our leaders and those that are working day in and day out, the pressures they face. I know for me as a pastor, the pressure that I face from, from two different sides throwing things at me. And I can imagine what our governor and our president are facing. And I pray that you would give our leaders great wisdom, give me great wisdom, give pastors wisdom, be with our doctors, be with our law enforcement individuals, just work in our nation and our world right now in Jesus' name. I pray that you would use this COVID-19 to bring a revival within your church, Father, and an awakening within our nation. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for your incredible love for us. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, thank you for joining with us this morning on YouTube or Facebook, and thank you to those of you who are here at the drive-in service. It's good to have each of you here this morning. All right, I've always believed that words are very important. Politics and now this COVID-19 seem to allow people to lose their filters when it comes to what they say. I think... Most people, including myself, need to memorize Proverbs 17, 28 and take it to heart. This is a good verse for you to write down in your Stay the Course extended journals and devotionals. Proverbs 17, 28. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. I love that verse. President Obama said in 2008, don't tell me that words don't matter. He went on to give a speech and what he was saying is that there is power in words. In James chapter 3 verse 2, it says, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and we could also control ourselves in every other way. Wow. During this time, I think we all need to take a lesson from Proverbs and James and work on controlling what comes out of our mouths or what we post on social media. Words can be really powerful. They have the ability to inspire us and challenge us. And in the case we're going to look at today, we see how the words of God that he spoke to a young man would change and guide a nation. Samuel heard the words of God during a time where they weren't hearing much. 1 Samuel 3.1 says, Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. Was it because God wasn't speaking or was it because his people weren't listening? I think it's because they weren't listening. I think God was speaking. I think God still speaks. But I think in this day and age, it was because they were not listening. Things were not good during this time. We, we are wrapping up with the final judge of Israel. 
we went through Judges and then Ruth and now we are here in 1 Samuel and as we've seen through the book of Judges again and again and again it says that the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did their own thing. They didn't really care what God thought. Kind of like our nation and our world today. Even though the messages from God were rare, it didn't mean they didn't happen. We can see again and again where God spoke. And I believe that the gentle whisper that Elijah heard was speaking even then and waiting for someone to tune in to the right frequency, just like those here at the drive-in service needed to tune in to 102.9. I also believe that the gentle whisper continues today waiting to be heard, waiting for us to hear that still small voice. The question is, how can we put ourselves in a posture to listen? I've heard again and again how posture is really important to our physical health. Well, spiritual posture is important to our spiritual health as well. And I think we can learn from this young boy, Samuel, about a spiritual posture. Last week, Heather spoke about Hannah and how she pleaded with God for a little baby, for a child. And she makes a deal with God saying, if you give me a child, I'll dedicate him to you. The boy's name was Samuel, and she placed him in the care of Eli, the priest. And this is where we begin today in 1 Samuel chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. It says, But Samuel, though he was only a boy, served the Lord. He wore a linen garment like that of a priest. Each year his mother made a small coat for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband for the sacrifice. Before they returned home, Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord give you other children to take the place of the one that you gave to the Lord. And the Lord gave Hannah three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Verses 22 through 25 switch from Samuel and deal with Eli's sons and how wicked they were and what they were doing. But then you hop all back to verse 26 and it says, while they're doing evil things, it says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with the Lord and with people. So my question this morning is, how can we put ourselves in a posture to listen? How can we put ourselves in a posture to listen? The first thing I see in looking at the pasture passage, excuse me, not pastor, passage, is Samuel separated himself from evil. He separated himself from evil. He could have been out there with Eli's sons doing all sorts of things, but he separated himself with, away from evil. Samuel is living with a mentor, Eli, but I'm sure he probably looked up to Eli's sons. You know, I challenge the teens, the older teens, that they need to be conscientious about their actions and attitudes because the younger children and the younger teens are looking up to them. It's part of how it works. And that could have been the way it was then as well. Samuel may have looked up to Eli's sons, but you know they were serving as priests, but they were entirely wicked. Samuel did not have good examples to look up to, especially as to what a priest should be. So how did Samuel remain good with the bad influences around him? He was just a child. Surely he was impressionable. I believe he made a commitment early on, early on, that he was going to relentlessly pursue God. He made a commitment early on that he was going to relentlessly pursue God and not the things of this world. I've told teens and adults that you can't wait until you're in the middle of a situation to make a decision. You've got to think through it before you make the decision or you get to that decision point. 
Kind of like why we have tornado drills and fire drills so that we can be prepared when we get in that crisis. Think through what we're going to do. Samuel thought through. He chose not to participate in sin and risk being ridiculed by people here, possibly even Eli's sons. But he was more concerned about what God thought. More concerned about what God thought than others thought. How often are we more concerned about what everybody else thinks than we are about what God thinks? I love the quote that I have said hundreds of times from John Wesley. Give me 100 people who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God and I will change the world. Samuel feared nothing but sin and desired nothing but God. Not only did Samuel separate himself from evil, but we also see that Samuel built himself a solid reputation by striving to draw close to God. In verse 26, it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with the Lord and with people. While Eli's sons were losing favor with God, doing their own thing, and they were losing favor with people, because of how they were treating them, Samuel was gaining in support of both. People were beginning to trust him, and God was realizing and knew he could trust him as well. By growing in favor with God, he's continuing to get to know who God is. In chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the heart of God, ark of God. He wanted to stay close to God, and by so doing, God blessed him. He wanted to stay close to God. I loved when Heather was sharing about the drive-in service that for her it's an act of worship to come, even if it's just sitting in the parking lot to come to church, it's an act of worship. For Samuel, sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God was an act of worship. He wanted to be close to him. And by doing so, he gained a good reputation with God and with people. People knew that they could listen to what he had to say. They knew he was listening to God. They say that a reputation can take years to build, but only a moment to destroy. We must guard our reputations. By having a good reputation, he made himself more reliable source for God because he was fleeing from sin, and people believed that he would hear from God. In chapter 3, we find that God calling Samuel. Samuel runs to Eli uh, three times to inquire what he needs. And it's the third time that Eli has this aha moment. And the light bulb turns on in his head, and he's like, oh, I understand. And in verse 8, Eli says, or Eli realized, it says, Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. In order to listen to God, not only do we need to separate ourselves from evil, and not only do we need to get to know God, but thirdly, we have to have an expectation of hearing from God. Verse 10 says, And the Lord called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. Do we have an expectation, church, to hear from God? Often we pray, but we don't really expect Him to answer. In James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, it says, But when you ask God, be sure that you really expect Him to answer, for a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Hmm. A double-minded man should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. I believe that we, you and I, his church will be in a posture to hear from God if we separate ourselves from sin. We fear sin 
above everything else and desire God above everything else. Number two, we get to close to God and we build a good reputation with Him by drawing close to Him. And number three, we have an expectation of hearing from God. I believe, church, that the gentle whisper that Elijah heard is still speaking. I believe that the voice that Samuel heard is still speaking. I believe that God is waiting for someone to find the right frequency and hear His voice. Church, are you listening to Him this morning? I believe if we are going to see a revival within our church, you and I, we have to do these three things. We have to get in the right posture to listen to God. We need to flee from sin. We need to draw close to Him. And we need to expect that we're going to hear from Him. And as a revival breaks loose here at Penn Forest Worship Center, I believe it will spread to other churches and we will see an awakening break loose in our nation. Is that what you desire? Is that what you long for this morning? That's what I long for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the example of Samuel in his life, how he fleed from sin, how he drew close to you, tried to get as close as possible, and then how he had an expectation of hearing from you. May we do the same this day. I pray that you will use this church, use me, use each individual that is watching this and listening to this this morning to bring a revival in this church. And may we see an awakening in our nation. Thank you for doing it, Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you. May he make his face to shine upon you this day. May he give you an attentive ear. May he heal your hearing. We have been kind of deafened by all the noise of the world. May he give you and me ears to hear this day. And may he fill you with a peace that surpasses all understanding, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And together, all God's people said, Amen. Did you say Amen this morning? I see it. Good deal. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week, and God bless.